Hi, my name is Charles Sterling. I'm a senior program manager in the Visual Studio team. And in this session, we're going to take a look at integrating your test efforts into DevOps workflows using Visual Studio 2015. That begs the question, what is DevOps? DevOps is a new way of building, deploying, and operating your software, which results in faster cycle times and more customer value. It has additional benefits as being able to look at and see what are your, how are your customers using your software and giving them the features they need. Being able to use cloud infrastructure to scale to larger deployments. And in this session, we're gonna take a look at integrating test efforts into your release pipeline to reduce the friction to get it into production and do it with higher quality. So what did we introduce in Visual Studio 2015 in terms of uh, test automation? We're using a shared and common architecture for both build and release management. This enables you to integrate your testing efforts into your continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. We're using an open and extensible architecture, which means that you can go out and use JUnit, MS Test, Selenium, and any of the other test frameworks you may already have investments in. And finally, by having a, being able to enable a distributed execution, you can go out and scale out to larger tests and actually deliver them faster. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Hey, looking at um, my Visual Studio Online account, you can see I have a test project. Let's go ahead and drill into my test project. And you'll see that there's a brand new menu called Build Preview. Let's drill into that and show you how you can integrate your test efforts into the continuous integration pipeline. Had I actually wanted to show you a continuous deployment pipeline, I would probably actually have started with release management. Take a look at my other video, because I actually do cover a lot of that. So by looking at the Build Preview, you can actually see that we had a bunch of problems earlier in the day. Um, they got better. Looks like um, they were succeeding, but with some challenges up in the test. Uh, this one looks like it just timed out, and then we had a success, and then we had a regression. Let's drill into that one that had a regression and see what's going on. You can see right off the bat, underneath the issues, that some of the tests passed. Under the test results, you can see that my integration tests, or my unit tests, actually um, passed, but my integration for my build verification tests are failing. Let's drill into those. Drilling into those, I've got a set of charts that give me a lot of metadata of, about my test runs themselves, giving me information about uh, breakdown by outcome, breakdown by priority, by failure type, and configuration. In this case, I actually don't know exactly what's going on by looking at it um, from these charts. So let's go ahead and drill down into my test results and take a look at it at a test run by test run. And you can see that um, the first couple are passing. Let's go ahead and take a look at what, which ones are passing and which ones are actually having problems? You can see that the Firefox one and the Chrome ones have, have succeeded, but the IE one failed. And I have the exact same trend. Here, um, I've got Firefox, I've got Chrome, but IE, again, once again, is failing. And it uh, looks like Alan may have already looked at this, and he's gone ahead and said that these need investigation. So... What's required to build this? You know, I'm, I'm running on, on, the, on remote machines. I am taking a look at different configuration. This has got to be pretty hard, right? No, not really. Um, let's take a start with the, the machine itself. By clicking on machines, I can show you how I can actually set up the remote, remote execution. Now, in this case, I actually was thinking ahead a little bit, and I opened it up in a new, new tab. So all of my machine groups are listed out. Um, and machine groups can have multiple machines. To create a new machine group, it's just something as simple as typing in a name, going out and giving credentials that would have access to those machines, and a password. And finally, the IP address. So, you know, something like this. And of course, you could use fully qualified names to make that work. At this point, it's just that easy to go out and create your distributed execution environment with hundreds and hundreds of machines to run your tests across your infrastructure. Now, let's go ahead and show you how we would actually use those machines and integrate your test into the build itself. Now, that build that we were taking a look at was, was doing actually quite a bit. Um, so let's go ahead and create one. First of all, it was building my Visual Studio project. So I'm going to go ahead and dig through, set the solution up. And you can actually tell right off the bat that it's, it's using a, a Git repo. And I could actually even go out and set which branch. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Well, let's go ahead and dig through that SLN. If I wanted to set it to a different branch, I could do that right here. Okay, so now that we're building the Visual Studio project, let's go ahead and say how we could actually set up the tests. 
In this case, these are the unit tests inside the project, and those are fine. I don't need to do anything else. But I do need to set up that distributed environment, set up the agent, and set up the environment that I want to test against. Because again, in that build I showed you, the environment I was testing against was different than where I was testing from. All right, so let's add those build steps. First of all, right off the bat, I want to create the environment that I'm going to test against. Um, adding that. Then I'm going to go ahead and create the test environment that I'm going to test with. So we're going to add a copy files and machines. Then I want to install that test agent in that test environment. And finally, I want to run those tests. Now going out and setting this up, I am going to use the auto in that I think I showed you when I was looking at those machine groups, and that's the machine group. In this case, if I had multiple machines, I could specify the machine. I only have one machine, so we're fine here. Um, in this case, um, I want to specify the entire drop that I'm using, and where do I want it to go on that machine. In this case, we're going to make it an easy convention, which is cclone backslash test, if I can type test. No, I guess apparently I just can't type in test, even though I'm doing test tools. And finally, which um, script do I want to run? In this case, it's in that same directory, part of that um, drop, and it's deploy.ps1. All right. At this point, I have to set up which, how am I going to um, copy the files to that test environment. And that, and I believe, is called test environment 2. And again, if you rewind the video, you can actually verify that I was correct here. Um, the source, I want to grab the entire drop. And again, using that same convention, I'm going to put it in my test directory. Um, for all my test assets that I'm going to run. In this case, I actually am going to run my Selenium tests. So the Selenium tests are going to get copied down. Um, okay. I am going to um, deploy the agent to that same environment, which is test env2. Um, if I want to set up the credentials, I, I could at that point. Now, this is saying, um, how do I want to install that agent as? And it is requiring me to set up some credentials here. So I could go ahead and type in my credentials. And in this case, the reason it's clear text is because it's expecting you to use these variables. So I would use some nomenclature like var1. Um, so again, this is a case where set up the variable once, reuse it again, and there's less chances of failures because of typing. As you can see from my typing, I probably have already inter introduced a couple of errors. Um, once again, we're going to use the test environment too. And the drop location is the same one that we're using, that same um, path. In this case, we probably want to go ahead and just run our Selenium tests. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the new test automation tools in Visual Studio 2015. And just to summarize, again, by using a shared and common architecture with both the build and release management, we enable easy integration with your continuous integration pipelines and your continual deployment pipelines. By having it, the architecture be open and extensible, you can use JUnit, MS Test, Selenium, or any other test framework that you might want to bring to the table. And by using a distributed execution, you can go out and scale your testing efforts larger and faster than you have ever been able to before. My name is Charles Sterling. Thank you very much for joining me in this Take a Look at Test Automation Tools in Visual Studio 2015.